Let's talk about Linux desktop, Mac OS, and also Windows, because these are the three operating systems that pretty much everyone knows. Most people just know Windows and Mac, but Linux desktop's kind of making this surge this year, and I really wanted to go over why I think Linux desktop is probably going to be the future, and I've been a lifelong Windows user, so you know most people just discard my opinion because they think I'm a Linux fanboy, but... I've only been on Linux desktop for a little less than a year now. November of 2018 was when I switched. And I got a lot of things after looking and being on the operating system. I just kind of want to tell you all what I think as far as the future goes, why I keep pushing Linux desktop and why I think people should learn it just to see if it's for them or not. It's not for everybody. I totally understand that, especially today. But I think here in four or five years, we're going to be seeing Linux desktop almost everywhere. And there's really two major factors to that. And that's what I'm talking about in this video. This video is brought to you by Pluralsight. I've used them to learn Citrix Zen app, Windows Server, and Linux administration. Click the link in the description and learn your skill today. All right, so let's jump right into this. The first one, which I've already talked about a lot on this channel, and that is gaming. A lot of people don't understand where the gaming is going. You got Google Strata, you got Steam really pushing a lot of this Linux initiative. And now that Google's kind of thrown its weight behind uh, Linux as well this year, we're going to see some really incredible evolution of computer gaming. And I, I can't wait for like the ACO compiler to come out and it literally will play a Windows game in some instances better than if it was on Windows, which is kind of amazing. And I've really told everyone about this reason. So it's no shocker that this is my number one, because I think really once you get into the gaming realm, that's really going to bring a lot of desktop users over to Linux. But right now, there's still a lot of games that don't quite work. And most of this will be resolved probably this year, at the very latest, early next year, especially with like Easy Anti-Cheat, PUBG, Fortnite, um, Apex Legends, you name it. These types of games uh, right now have a cheat system that's kind of hard for Linux to emulate. But for the most part, this will be fixed so not a big deal. I'm not worried about this, but it has kept a couple people back. And honestly, I'm okay with that because a lot of times there's still some games that you can't just click install and go. And, and probably about half the games you can, which is amazing because if you go back one year or two years, you couldn't do that with practically any game that wasn't native to Linux. And right now, you can, and it's actually very functional for a mass amount of games. So if you're in that camp and you're like, you know what, I'm really sick of Windows, I have to get off, or I'm really sick of Mac, I want to switch to Linux, well, look at Proton DB, and then also look at Lutris. Make sure the games that you love are on there and play just fine. So that's why I say this, but I understand it's still not 100% there, but we're getting there like really fast, like ridiculously fast. Because when I first joined, it was about 30%. Right now, it's hovering around 70% compatibility with games. So almost 40% an entire year. That's just sick. But I don't want to beat this horse to death. We know about gaming. That's not really that shocker, especially with like a lot of the new stuff coming in. Most people know about Strata. I've already talked about the compiler uh, playing and rendering things even faster than Windows, and we're going to see a lot of adoption when that happens. But let's move on to the second point, because this is one that is completely overlooked. Uh, very few people actually consider this as an adoption point. And I'm talking about refurbished PCs. And people are like, what? <laughs> and, and really... It got me thinking, I saw a news article, and this is an older news article, where this guy uh, gave out like 28,000 recovery you know, CDs. And, and he here's a little snippet of that. 47 years in prison is what they wanted. $8.37 million worth of fines and fees is what they wanted. This giant stepped on me, and I felt it. 
Microsoft has accused Eric Lundgren of creating thousands of illegal copies of its software. He argues he was only using it to extend the lifespan of old PCs. What we're doing today, our blind consumerism is not sustainable. We need to stop. We need to really understand how things are built and understand how we're supposed to fix them. And as you see, he actually ended up going to prison for this. And it's kind of silly because these refurb PCs that he's putting windows on are probably going to run worse than if he just put like a Lubuntu, you know, a lightweight Linux install on it. It would run a lot faster. It would do a lot of things better than if it had windows on it. Most people that are buying a refurb PC aren't gamers. They just want to use their PC for just work. And Linux is fantastic at that almost it, to an incredible stable operating system that is extremely lightweight is a dream for most users. It's just most people don't even know about it. So this guy literally could have probably saved a ton of jail time if he would have just said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to load Linux on it. Now, that said, this was back in 2012 when this all went down. And in 2012, Linux desktop isn't what it is today. So let's go to today, which is seven years later. If this same situation happened, he would have been a fool not to load Linux desktop, which I see more and more people realizing you can refurb these old PCs and put Linux on it. But not only just put Linux on it, you're going to save money. It's going to work faster and better because of this older hardware just can't handle a lot of the updates that Windows has done. So therefore, refurbing it with Linux just makes a lot of sense. And three it's actually very eco-friendly. Most of these computers that don't run Windows 10, well, they're just going to be left in the dust. You know, they're going to be just thrown out as trash. And the whole point with Eric Lundgren was that he actually wanted to save the environment. He wanted to recycle these old pieces of, uh, in parts that literally were just trash and make refurb PCs out of them. With Linux and a lightweight version of Linux, he now can and do a really, really fantastic job and give new life to these old dying computer parts that really don't have any purpose elsewhere. So I really see the refurb market in Linux really grow. That's where I see this next year Linux really stepping into it. Very Be very wise of many of these refurb people to instead of paying, I think it's $25 refurb license on, on Windows, instead of paying that $25, they just say, forget it. I want the computer to work faster on a lightweight Linux and just put that on there and then have people run it. Because most people, I made a video about breathing life back in an old laptop. I'll link it up in the card. But you can take these old crappy computers and literally breathe a ton of new life into them. And this is really the two main major factors for Linux adoption and why we're starting to see an incline, I think, really starts with gaming as gaming has really become viable. And then two, I think we're going to see a second resurgence and really, you know, really go vertical as far as Linux adoption goes, like several percents. That's amazing. I, I really see these two factors really taking a hold of Linux and going forward and propelling it forward. But a lot of that revolves around one, making Linux friendly. And that's what I aim to do on this channel. I know sometimes I'm not the best at that. But it's something I really aim to do to help people. And I think anybody that has the know-how definitely should. Heck, I was at zero subscribers um, uh, about a year year ago. So now I'm at 73,000 as far as the making of this video. It's really something that people care about. I, and I've talked mainly about Linux on this channel with some Windows tips and tricks thrown in. But it's good to know that, hey, if that's your thing and you really want to be on YouTube or or do have like this massive purpose in life and help a ton of people making Linux tutorial content I think will definitely be a huge thing coming up heck it already is a huge thing as you can see by the success of my channel but the second thing really is dispelling a lot of the myths of Linux because over the past 20 years Linux has a lot of bad rap in the IT industry especially Heck, just thinking back to what my initial impressions were when I tried Ubuntu like five years ago, I was like, yeah, I can't really do much with this. It looks pretty though, and it seems to work okay for copying files and opening the occasional document and browsing the web, but I really can't do much past that. And that's, I just discarded it. I didn't think anything of it. And really it's changing that mentality because 
I'm just super pumped when I talk about Linux because it, it breathes a lot of new life into that uh, just love of technology. I, I love technology. Heck, I loved Windows once upon a time. I love Mac when it had that Hackintosh thing. I, I still like it a little bit. I mean, it's fine if they don't kill it with, uh, you know, ARM processors like they're talking. Anyways, digressing. Let's move on. I really love this aspect, and that's why I'm like, all gung-ho about Linux is because it's incredible H having that just air of discovery that uh, I, I just love what I do. I love messing around and tinkering and figuring these things out and then making videos about it. I think that's incredible. I, I absolutely uh, reinvigorated my love of computers, which had almost dwindled and died in the past 10 years because of all the just crap that you have going on with all the other operating systems that kind of beat you down. But th those are my big reasons why and really what we need to do or you need to check out. You know, if you're watching this video and you hadn't tried Linux desktop, check it out. Boot to a live environment on a thumb drive. You don't have to install it. Just kind of flip around, see how far it's come and how far it's going to go is going to be just incredible. So the earlier adopter you are on this, I think the better off you'll be when eventually it, it really has that huge swing to where a lot more people use Linux desktop, especially when it comes to gaming. And then also uh, kind of taking care of all these old parts instead of filling up these waste centers with just old crappy electronics, we could recycle them and really breathe new life into all these old machines. But with all that said, what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments section below, and I'll see you on the next video.